Hey everybody, hope everyone's having a good day. We are getting back to the countdown of the 50 greatest players in Boston Red Sox history by Robert W. Cohen. Uh, today we'll look at players 30 down to 26. So, starting us off at number 30 is Mike Greenwell. And this is a 1990 Dunross Best. And that's the back of it. Mike Greenwell. Mike Greenwell played for the Red Sox from 1985 to 1996. Greenwell's nickname was Gator because he wrestled alligators in his home state of Florida. Greenwell started out well, putting up very good numbers for the first few seasons with the Sox. But after some small injuries, he never put up power numbers as he had before. Greenwell was a very serviceable left fielder for the Red Sox, but he never lived up to his potential. Unfortunately for him, the left field position had 48 straight years of a Hall of Famer playing out there. Ted Williams, Carl Yastrzemski, and then Jim Rice. And now it was Mike Greenwell's turn, and the Boston press and fans expected him to be a Hall of Famer. But those were two big shoes to fill, and... Very, Greenwell was very pressed to carry on that lineage. Greenwell's 12-year totals with the Sox are 303 batting average, 130 home runs, 726 RBI, 1,400 hits, and .831 OPS. He was an All-Star in 1988 and 89. So he was a very serviceable left fielder. He just wasn't a Hall of Famer. So at number 30, Mike Greenwell. Okay, coming in at 29. Frank Malzone. And this is his 1960 Tops card. Nice corners, a little off center, but that doesn't bother me one bit. It's a uh, old SGC eight, and has the back of it. Frank Malzone. He played for the Sox from nineteen fifty five to nineteen sixty five. Before Brooks Robinson started his 16 straight year run of winning the gold glove at third base, there was Frank Mazzone with three, state, three straight years himself winning the gold glove, 1957 through 1959. Mazzone was one of the few bright spots on those dreary Red Sox teams he was on. Following his playing days, Malzone continued to work for the Red Sox organization for another 35 years, starting out as a scout, then becoming a special assignment instructor. He was inducted into the Red Sox Hall of Fame in 1995. His 11 year numbers with the Sox are 274 batting average. 1,486 hits, 728 RBI, and a 714 OPS. He was in six All-Star games and, like I mentioned, won three gold gloves. Frank Malzone. Okay, now coming in at the number 28, Mel Parnell. And this is a 1954 Tops. 
I really like the look of the year 1954 tops did. Very nice job. And this is the back of it. That nice green color. Parnell played from 1947 to 56 with the Red Sox. Parnell's great years with the Sox dispelled the previously held notion that left-handers could not succeed in Fenway Park. That's left-handed pitchers. He was 71 and 30 in his career pitching in Fenway with an overall record of 123 and 75. Arm problems in the final three seasons limited him to only 44 starts between 1954 and 1956. These injuries finally caused him to retire. With his 123 wins, he is the leading left-hander in wins for the Sox. He is also number four for wins on the Red Sox behind Cy Young, Roger Clemens, and Tim Wakefield. After retirement, Parnell managed the Sox minor league system, then later was part of the Boston radio and TV broadcasting crew from 1965 to 1968. His 10-year career numbers with the Sox are 123 and 75, 3.50 ERA, 732 Ks, and he was a two-time All-Star. So, Mel Parnell. Okay, coming in at number 27. Lefty Grove. This is his 1934 Diamond Star. And there's the back of it. Here we go. Lefty Grove. Beautiful card. Lefty Grove played for the Red Sox from 1934 to 1941. Lefty Grove was already an all-star pitcher with the Philadelphia A's when he was traded to Boston in 1934. He came to Boston with an already record of 195 wins and 79 losses and was one of the game's most dominant pitchers. Even though Grove lacked his once overpowering fastball by the time he joined Boston, he still had enough left to win 60% of his decisions and capturing another four ERA titles with the Sox. Relying heavily on off-speed pitches and the guile of himself, Grove kept winning and reached the 300 wins in a Boston Newman's form. There are many baseball historians that call him the greatest left-handed pitcher there ever was. His eight-year Boston records are 105 and 62, 3.34 ERA, 743 Ks, and he was a five-time All-Star from 1935 to 1939. He was inducted into the Major League Hall of Fame in 1947, and he was also inducted in the Major League All-Century team. So that's Lefty Grove. I really like these Diamond Star cards. I actually did a video about them um, a couple of videos back, so if you're not familiar with them or you like them too, please, please check that video out. Very nice little cards. Okay, and the final one for today is number 26. Fred Lynn. And you're looking at a 1976 Tops with his autograph on it. Lynn played for, for the Red Sox from 1974 to 1980. 
1975, Lynn became the first major, league, major leaguer to capture both the Rookie of the Year and MVP honors. He put up very good numbers for the Bo Sox, but his all-out aggressive style and play took a toll on his body and injuries began to affect to his ability to play. And he was eventually traded away in 1981. Lynn was part of the Gold Dust Rookies in 1975, along with Jim Rice. And they had a tremendous outfield of Rice in left, um, Lynn in center, and a young Dwight Evans in right. His seven-year totals with the Sox are a .308 batting average, 124 home runs, .902 OPS. He is a six-time All-Star with the Sox and also won four gold gloves as a Sox. So that's his 1976 card. And it is autographed. And that's the back of it. So thank you very much, and I hope you please do look out for more episodes. We have uh, 25 more players to go. Thank you. Bye.